Although the first season of House of the Dragon took many liberties with the account of the Dance of the Dragons that is chronicled in the book Fire and Blood. Undoubtedly one of the most controversial apparent retcons in the season and likely throughout the entire series will be the fact that the deaths of Lucerys and Arax are portrayed as accidental rather than intentional. And while the presumption that this is a bit of a cop-out that is intended to wobbify Aemon's characterization is understandable, the presentation of this series of events actually makes a staggering amount of sense and is a plot twist that George R. R. Martin has been setting up since the first moments that he began creating this fictional world. Luke's accidental death is a Chekhov's gun that has been waiting to go off in the world of Ice and Fire for years. One of the most interesting facets of the early stages of A Song of Ice and Fire's development is that initially George R. R. Martin was indecisive about giving this family the ability to wield the power of dragons. Martin was torn between giving the Targaryens pyrokinetic abilities and giving them dragons, and on the advice of his friend and writer Phyllis Eisenstein, he ultimately decided that dragons were the way to go. On the one hand, this choice is obvious in that dragons are simply a cooler mythological element than magical fire powers. However, given George R. R. Martin's writing style and the lore that has been developed around the dragons themselves, the likelihood that this decision wouldn't have some serious narrative relevance at some point in the history of House Targaryen is almost zero. There are many aspects of the inclusion of dragons rather than the pyrokinesis concept that could have potential narrative relevance. But the primary Chekhov's gun that this idea introduces is that, while the Targaryens have access to the strongest firepower in the history of Planetos, there is still a living, breathing, and supposedly very intelligent being that exists between that firepower and the Targaryen control of it. Yes, clearly dragons and dragon riders have a significant bond and connection unlike anything else, but dragons are still animals with their own thoughts, desires, and instincts and those can all come into conflict with the thoughts, desires, and instincts of their riders. And creating that extra degree of separation between that power and the human beings who are attempting to wield it implies relevance by virtue of its existence. Meaning, if this barrier between the Targaryens and the power that they're attempting to use for themselves wasn't going to be something important, then that barrier wouldn't be there in the first place. And even aside from the fact that the story has undoubtedly included this information about the riders and dragons not being one and the same for a broader narrative purpose, it has been subtextually obvious that this would become a relevant plot point sooner or later. Because the concept of a dragon not following the commands of its rider has been a fairly consistent minor theme within the story and the historical lore of the world of ice and fire at large. Undoubtedly the most memorable instance of dragons making their own choices in contrast to their riders' demands comes at the end of A Dance with Dragons. After Daenerys flies on Drogon's back for the first time, they are essentially stranded in the middle of the Dothraki Sea. And no matter what she does, she can't convince Drogon to fly back to Marine. In another instance of dragons refusing the commands of their riders, Queen Alysanne once flew Silverwing north to the Wall, and although she attempted to cross the wall with Silverwing three times, the dragon refused her orders every time and flew away from the wall instead. In arguably the most disturbing example of a rider being unable to control their dragon thus far, the Princess Arya Targaryen claimed Balerion as her mount and both dragon and rider vanished for over a year afterward. Arya did finally return to Westeros eventually, but in an absolutely horrific state. She was starving, had a fever, she had some sort of living creatures beneath her skin, and she seemed to be cooking from the inside out. Unsurprisingly, she died not long after her return to King's Landing. And, as an obvious hint of foreshadowing in House of the Dragon itself, Lena Valerian's death was specifically altered from the Fire and Blood version of events, and she instead begs Vagar to end her pain and burn her alive, but Vagar doesn't immediately follow her commands. So suffice it to say, there are more than enough anecdotes establishing that this is a recurrent problem. And more importantly, these incidents almost certainly wouldn't be introduced if they weren't foreshadowing for something more significant. If a writer sets up this kind of foundation, it's because something more important is going to be built on top of it. It's long been hinted that Daenerys' inability to fully control her dragons would be a significant plot point or have some serious consequences. And it's entirely possible that this is still true but it also makes a great deal of sense within the context of the Dance of the Dragons and could actually serve to make the story a lot more interesting going forward. One of the strangest aspects of Game of Thrones is that the dragons were largely presented as a weapon that were relatively easy to wield, 
But at least contextually, it made a bit more sense, because for almost the entire series, there was no force more powerful than the dragons, and Daenerys was the only one who had control of them. In contrast to that, House of the Dragon obviously features different factions who have access to dragon power, and it would be strange if that was unaddressed or a total non-issue. Dragons by their nature should be a very powerful weapon that aren't particularly easy to handle. And it should be made more difficult through the fact that in the Dance of the Dragons, they will be facing off against creatures that are as powerful as they are. And that lends itself to a lot of interesting narrative possibilities. Dragons themselves might be somewhat symbolic of weapons of mass destruction, but by acknowledging them as actual living and independently thinking animals, it makes the Targaryen Civil War considerably more complex and means that all of these characters might not be able to use dragon power in the way that they want to. Ultimately, Although there have been a multitude of adjustments made to the narrative that was presented in Fire and Blood, this one arguably makes the most sense from a broader lore contextual standpoint that can lend itself to more interesting story options going forward. But with all of that said, this wasn't exactly a flawless narrative decision either. On its own, it's a really interesting concept that lends itself to more complex storytelling in the future. But there are aspects of it that hurt the series as well. Firstly, while this would be much easier to swallow if it were a one-off situation, the entire first season of House of the Dragon has seemingly gone far out of its way to alleviate any character's personal responsibility or agency in the way that things actually play out. There is definitely a believable element to these changes, and the story of Fire and Blood is already established to be told through the lens of a potentially very unreliable narrator. But the unwillingness to actually place any culpability onto the characters for the fact that they ultimately go to war with one another simply makes for a stranger story filled with characters whose characterization has been diluted for no real reason. There are a lot of comprehensible justifications for the characters to actively choose many of these courses of action, even if they're ultimately bad decisions. So to sidestep that in favor of creating a comedy of errors that ultimately leads to continental war is a sketchy one. Similarly, while this decision is understandable from a broader storytelling perspective, to take what most book readers assumed was an act of aggression that intentionally led to war and make it into an accident really deflates the weight of the incident on first viewing. In fact, the account of this incident in Fire and Blood is vaguer than most might remember, and in retrospect, that may have been intentional. The book specifically says, the tragedy that befell Lucerys Valerian at Storm's End was never planned. And while most readers interpreted that as Luke and Aemon unintentionally encountering each other and getting into a fight that turned deadly, that description can still apply to them getting into a fight and their dragons taking over the fight for them. Stories can subvert the expectations of audiences and still be satisfying. But in order to actually satisfy, the intensity of the payoff generally needs to be equal to what the audience thought they were going to see. Therefore, because so many viewers were expecting to see an epic showdown and the broader fandom interpretation of what had happened between them had been solidified as a fight to the death, reducing it to a freak accident is a bit of a flop decision. And when this particular showdown was set up as a significant climax of the entire season, nerfing the presumed intent behind it leaves the season off on a bit of a sour note. If Luke's death was just meant to be yet another instance of bullying gone bad, then it probably shouldn't have been positioned as the climactic moment of the finale. And, while the revelation that Aemond isn't quite the level of war criminal that book fans believed him to be, the fact that he didn't directly intend to murder Luke and Arax doesn't magically alleviate him of all responsibility either. Yes, he went after Luke with the intent of terrorizing him rather than killing him. But his assumption that he could command his ancient, war-hardened dragon to chase a littler dragon and not activate any of Vagar's predatory warrior instincts is absurd. And the expectation that he could chase Arax and Arax would not attempt to defend himself was also idiotic. And the possibility that one dragon chasing another dragon might lead to animalistic survival instincts kicking in and leading to a potentially deadly fight that can't be halted through a few commands is obvious. Still, it's a twist that lends itself to very interesting future character development for Aemond, and it will be really interesting to see where this goes in a broader sense for the series at large. Yes, Luke's death was an unintended consequence of Aemond lashing out, which is incredibly ironic given the circumstances. But at present, Aemond is also the only person who even knows that it was an accident. 
The fact that the Dance of the Dragons was started because of unresolved familial drama and unintended consequences for actions is incredibly thematically appropriate, though. And seeing the children of this conflict begin to play out the logical results of their parents constantly escalating bad behavior is very on brand. It will also be interesting to see what George R. R. Martin has to say about this particular moment in the series, as House of the Dragon has clearly been factoring in his input while also making some significant alterations. Fire and Blood has a lot of built-in leeway for canonical interpretation. And the subtext for this plot twist has been developed within the book franchise for literal decades at this point. However, regardless of the specificities, this tweak of Fire and Blood's narrative actually makes a lot more sense than it might seem to at first glance. It makes more sense than a lot of the other changes that have been made within House of the Dragon thus far. And it could lead to a lot more interesting narrative and character development going forward. But what do you think? Was Vagar going rogue and killing Luke and Arax a revelation of what was planned as canon all along? Or did the writers take unnecessary liberties with the story to make Aemon seem like a better man than he is? Leave your comments and opinions below. And if you're interested in more content like this, like and subscribe.